Hi, I'm Francesca, and you're watching The Permanent Rain Press. Hi everyone, it's Chloe with The Permanent Rain Press. Today, I'm so happy to be joined by Francesca LaCava. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. Thank you. You? I'm doing well. I know we were just talking at the beginning, but you are the first cast member we are interviewing from Diaries, which is so exciting. Thank you for being here. So exciting for me. It's such a pleasure. Thank you. Well, we will talk about the show in just a moment, but to start off, what can you share about your background in the arts and when you knew you had a love for performing? Okay, so my background in the arts is made up of four years at the acting school Jenny Tambori, and I attend the school two hours a week on Saturday afternoons. And I actually started loving performing, not when I started the courses, because I was uh, just 11 years old. And so I was a young girl and I never took acting as initially, obviously, as something that would have brought me somewhere and not a, as a commitment. But after being judged really uh, badly, I wanted to give something about me, I wanted to show something, and then I started improving and even studying. And then I understood uh, at the age of 13, 14, when I think I grew up and I matured, that that was what I wanted to do in the future. So then I considered it as a real job. <laughs> Yeah, and this is your first project. So what a project to kind of jump into. <laughs> Tell me, you mentioned Jenny Tambury Acting School. What are some important lessons that you have learned from your studies that you were kind of maybe able to take into your first project? So the first one is actually a personal lesson that they've taught me that is, according also to what I said before, never giving up. Because sometimes for for standing up you actually have to fall down and that was what I did actually then it's also listening because listening and acting is kind of under underrated but it's a crucial point because we're actually giving a natural answer first of all you have to listen to what your colleague or the person next to you is saying then you have a great answer and it all it almost will seem that you're not following a script then there is a third lesson that they gave me is silence. So they taught me was what silence is. That is actually really, really important in acting because sometimes words are superficial. You just need to be silent and watch your audience in a particular way. And then even reading through the lines is really important if you want to act because when you have a script in front of yourself, you don't just have to read the lines and read the words, but you'll have to understand the meaning behind them and what it means for the character, what he is saying or what she is saying. I love that. It just, I mean, you're Thanks. getting all these tidbits and I know you're kind of soaking it all in and now you get to apply it in actual film and TV projects. So we'll start talking about diaries or it's diary for in Italian but diaries when um, it shows up on my Netflix page but what can you share about the audition process for the show? So the audition process for the show has been actually crazy it, it has been exhausting a little bit it has been a long process it lasted actually two years and I remember that two years ago I was just having a normal vacation normal summer and I didn't expect that all of this would have happened and they just called me as a normal audition and I started doing more and more and more always with the same scripts and with the same characters then I started understanding that something was changing when last summer they started insistently saying uh, please do not tan please uh, uh, go to the beach but cover always your hair cover always your face uh, and put on su sunscreen and then when I was in the car, uh, we were coming back um, from uh, a vacation. I received this uh, phone call where my agency told me to me and my parents, like, your girl has been taken for a Netflix series. She is going to participate as a main character in a Netflix series. And I started crying. I started really crying. I was so 
happy. That is so nice to share that moment with your parents who I'm sure your family is so proud of you. And in terms of Ariana, like what did you enjoy about her qualities and what challenged you when playing her? So this question is a little bit challenging because as Ariana, you would think how which qualities does she have? But she actually has a quality which is changing. She applies changes on her character for people that are surrounding her she understands that she's not treating people well and so she starts doing some changes in order to be accepted and what was really challenging me challenging for me was assuming uh, her um, attitude her gestures her looks her constant ner- her constant being nervous, it's really difficult keeping that type of uh, acting when you're not actually like this. Like, I'm a sweet girl. I'm not as Ariana. And I remember that my acting coach, before starting um, filming the series, dedicated an entire afternoon on my looks, on my eyes. So she placed a chair in the middle of the room where we were practicing. And I saw it doing like walking near to her when she was on the chair and I was looking at her in a really terrible way but that was the only way that I could like get in the character there was no other way rather than screaming or being always angry trying to trying to be nervous and tense that was the only way but it was really really challenging And good practice that you were able to kind of work on it ahead of time, because like you mentioned, her, her personality, it's, it's very cold. And we see that throughout at least the first half of the season. Now, um, I want to talk about her, her mother, we know that she organizes a lot of Ariana's life, she has after school activities, a nutritionist and a therapist. Did you discuss any other elements of her personal life with your writers or director and if so could you share what you created or imagined her backstory to be? Of course Ariana backstory is completely based on her relationship with her mother and together with uh, Livia Cruciani the writer and Alessandro Celli we um, focused her story and her character on this point and then we developed other ideas connected to this like the fact that she has a lack of attention from her mother then means that she is going always to be unsure of uh, what her friendships and what their relationship with other people are going to be so she is in constant research of someone that is actually interested in her but although she doesn't want to speak with other people because she thinks that she is going to have the same uh, disappointment that she has had with her mother. This is really difficult to understand, but many teenagers live this thing. Maybe the Aha, they want to find someone to talk to, but it's really difficult after doing it. So we didn't actually discuss other points of her private life because we thought that her mother was the crucial point of her life. So that Mm, those little things about scheduling her life after um, after change her entire life. So that is what we thought. Thank you for sharing that. I thought that that was really good insight into a lot of you know her motivations. And I mean, she has friends. She has Lu- Lucia Carlotta, but as we can see in the show, they don't know a lot about her personal life. That's kind of something she keeps to herself. Yes, it's just a superficial friendship, but she has never actually talked to them. Now, which was your favorite scene to be a part of and why? So my favorite scene was actually the picnic with Julio. We were so excited before filming that scene that we started thinking about when we were filming, like we did actually a countdown for waiting that day. This is because when at a certain point, when you start filming a series or in general a project, you will find a certain 
attraction to your character that could be a friendship or a, you're just affectionate to your character and at that point we were almost finishing to finishing the set the set is was always almost going to end so we were really really affectionate to the couple Julia and Ariana and we couldn't wait for that day to begin to film that scene as if we were Julia and Ariana that were stressed for meeting each other for the first time actually and it was such a good experience because there were some times in which we laughed because it was our first like kissing scene during a series and so there was a little bit of embarrassment but then it went so good we were really really happy about the results i just love their relationship and we will talk about that in just a moment but before that if you don't mind sharing some thoughts on some other scenes and moments in season one, starting with Ariana's birthday party, what do you remember from filming the party scene? Ariana's birthday party was one of other, um, another scene that we waited, like the whole set waited for filming that scene. Everybody told Ariana's party, Ariana's party. It was a really good scene to film, but really complicated at the same time because there are many point of views, POVs to, to film. So it was a long, long day. We actually spent the whole day filming that scene. And initially we thought that that would have been the last day that we filmed. So we were on one side uh, sad because set was going to end, but on the other, we wanted to film the scene. The thing that I remember that it seemed that we were at a real party, but it was a little bit embarrassing dancing because there wasn't a, a real music. Like it was a kind of symphony that we had to dance and many of us didn't know how to. And then I remember the moment in which we were finishing the scene. So the set was actually ending and, the, and Alessandro took his headphones when we finished, took him away from his head and told, Guys, what can I say? You just finished filming the series. And I started crying with all the other guys. Oh, I have goosebumps. It was such a nice experience that we didn't want to finish. But I'm sure a really celebrate celebratory way to end things off and what's nice is um your birthday is in November and you did celebrate yep. your birthday during filming of season one so I feel like yes. it was Ariana's birthday but it also could have been a bit of your own birthday as well yes yes I can cons I consider that as my birthday and then yes I did also had a party in the set like during the break because it was on November 13th and so we were still filming and it was really good. It was funny in the party scene or leading up when she was handing out the invitations because she couldn't get oh. everyone's attention and I was saying that moment was kind of out of character when she banged on the desk and she's like listen to me. That, that moment was so like goofy to, to film because everybody heard me like banging on the on the desk and I like I was shouting but it was really fun also that scene now I remember it when I also say like this is a uh, the game like the VIP invite for you and it was really, really fun. <laughs> So in Rome, we know that it was Ariana who stole Livia's music box, and she writes her a text message, but chooses not to send it, hides the music box. Take me through that scene and why she did it. Okay, so that scene was filmed in my real room. This is like a, an information that not everybody knows. And... It was, I think it was a really important scene for Ariana and at the same time for the relationship with Livia because we can see how Ariana wants actually to change. She wants to try to get in touch with Livia, but then she fails because she is on one side unsure. For the first one, it's like one of the first times that we can see a weakness of Ariana rather than, rather than her being always strong and cold. So. Then she cancels that message perhaps because she always wants to stay in that kind of pattern and that kind of character. She doesn't want to lose her power. And I like, it was a really good scene because as I said before, silence is being silent is really important. And there's 
no words in that scene. It's just looks and silence. And even like the moment in which Ariana walks, I think that that gives a certain kind of suspense to the audience because you can hear her steps and then you see how she puts her carry on in the wardrobe and then gets away as if she knows that she is doing something actually wrong. Well, unfortunately, we don't get to see that resolved. But do you think that if it comes out, it could affect her and Livia's relationship in the future? Yes, I think it would really affect, affect their relationship, but not, not necessarily negatively. Because Ariana could also say, like, I know that I've done a mistake. I know I also wanted to tell you, but I didn't have, I, like, I feared what your reaction would have been. Or we could also see, like, the inverse pattern that Livia would just be so angry that they wouldn't talk to each other as usual. I do not want to see that happen, but I will note, I, I thought you did that scene so well because you could tell that she had guilt over it. But like you mentioned, she doesn't necessarily want to lose that power either. So she's kind of being pulled from two different sides. But um, I guess we'll have to wait to see, fingers crossed, for, for more on that <laughs> front. But episode 10 on Julio's uncle's boat, how was that boat ride? The boat ride, guys, was unique, was a great experience, even for me that I feel like seasick really easily. But on that moment, I was so excited for that scene that I couldn't feel anything. I was just having fun with Liam. He, of course, entertained me during the boat ride. Uh, otherwise, I would have like jumped out of the boat because I was so scared. But it was a really cool day because it was the first day that we were filming out of Rome. We were filming for the first day in Ischia. And uh, that scene was uh, really important too for the relationship between Ariana and Giulio and even and for Ariana too. Because perhaps you audience are going to feel in that scene that Ariana is trying to show herself as another person. Finally, she is understanding that she has someone to talk to. And that is Julio. Although this thing is really unexpected. And I like this, you know, even it, even because there is that part of fun, like where the crowd goes out of the water and gives that little bit of spice and the, a little bit of Ariana in the scene. Did they tell you, like, were they giving you the countdown behind the camera when the, the lobster crab came out of the water? No, they didn't give any countdown. They just, like, said in Italian, Aragosta. And in that moment, it came out. And I, like, I, I felt like it, it was here. So I was really scared. I wouldn't have jumped out of the boat, but almost like it was natural for me screaming because it's unexpected like I jumped <laughs> yeah real surprise but hey yes. it worked out well for the camera um episode 14 Ariana reads her essay about finding the meaning of true friendship did it feel like a full circle moment from when we first met her and was this dialogue meaningful for you personally so the scene where Ariana reads her essay is actually a full circle for her character. And it was really important for me personally reading that essay, even though I, I, act, I didn't actually write it. But it represented somehow the relationship and the growth of the relationship that I had with my colleagues. So we started as individuals, as different people who were talking to each other just because they were working together. But then we kind of mixed all, all our stories or all our experiences and then we created a true family and filming that scene was, was has been really exciting because I put true emotions in reading that essay true feelings and how all my classmates look at me was a true happiness of them looking at me looking at Ariana that was introducing yourself in the class so it has been a really, really good scene to film. It was one of my favorites in the season. Um, now, which was your favorite scene as a viewer and why? As a viewer, one of my favorite scenes has been the runway of the guys. 
there are so mem many memories connected to that scene that you can't even imagine. Like we mm, we were surprised to see all the guys wearing underwears. Like we we didn't look at them before we were filming the scene. So we were waiting them in the class. And at a certain point, we can see all the guys that were entering and like having fun. And we had real fun in that in that scene. Like I actually didn't participate. You can see me a lot, like just once and I'm clapping, clapping my hands. But looking at the girls that were having revenge on the guys was such a good experience. Like I was like, I just needed popcorns and then I could like look the old the whole day at that scene without even saying anything. <laughs> it did look very entertaining and it's it's nice that when they came in so it was kind of like a surprise for the first time and you know they're they're out there strutting and walking down the catwalk did whose did you think was the the best because I know you weren't involved in the scoring but watching it yeah. back on, on the show who who actually won mm, so that is actually difficult to say but I'm always like I, I say I don't know <laughs> I say Julio is the first one because he is always he's always my favorite then there is also Pietro that could have done a little bit more I thought like he is so secure about himself I thought he would have done a little bit better but then also like Mirko did a quite quite job because how he said like hi to all the girls I was like so 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 entertained but I liked all of them Mikkel that one was funny he should have gotten scored higher for the effort <laughs> yeah so Michele yeah so Michele that did like all the, the dance he did like a real gentleman yeah and the confidence too I like the confidence um at the yeah. start Ariana is interested in Pietro they even share a kiss was she interested? Did she like him because to her and to everyone else, he was cool? Or was there something more and deeper to her affection? I think that she only liked him because it was a common opinion, we can say. I think that Ariana never felt something really deep for Pietro, even though sometimes in the scenes we may think that it's something deep. But I believe it's a kind of superficial emotion or feeling that there is between them, like kind of chemistry, but just given by the fact that she is a popular girl and he's a popular boy. Many times it happens when you're a popular boy, people also change the perspective, the per perspective and their opinion just because you're known by everyone and people usually think that you're the best. But I think it wasn't something special. I like your analysis there because like you mentioned, it can happen. And, you know, at the start for Ariana, of course, she would think they look good together, popular and popular. But um, we'll get into talking about I know a relationship that you are a fan of, of course, Ariana and Julio. And after seeing him at her therapist's office, she begins to grow more fond of him. And when he doesn't pay as much attention to Ariana she notices so tell me about this shift for her and why she began to see Julio differently so this is really a particular shift that there is in Ariana like I was surprised in the moment in which Ariana always said no to what Julio did for her and in the moment in which he he like stopped chasing her she actually started feeling some certain interest for him. It is a particular shift and I think that it's normal because sometimes what is not so uh, close to us, what is seems like to run away from us is what is more attractive. And being Ariana, the popular girl, she should have always been attracted from someone that didn't chase her. So I think that Julio actually played, not played, but he did the he did the right thing. Like he didn't deserve being treated so badly from Ariana. So the only thing that she needed was a little bit of time for considering Julio not just as a friend and from noticing how she actually needed him in her life. So him not being constantly present in her life 
gave her time to understand that she needed uh, his presence. I just love your scenes together. You mentioned the picnic. Uh, tell me what it's like working with Liam, especially so closely one on one. Working with Liam has been one of the best experiences that I've had on set. Because after some time we've worked together and we've acted together, a kind of chemistry has been created between each other. And I think it's really important. You need someone that understands you and also someone that uh, makes it easy to play a scene. So I believe that he has such a great and unique personality because he is so thoughtful but at the same time uh, easy to understand like what he says and what he actually thinks and many scenes have been so fun to um, to film with him because he was actually entertaining him I was saying before every time I found something to laugh with him I never got I never got annoyed and I think he represents a kind of Julio in my life after all as I could represent for him the Ariana he actually represents a Julio. He is always present and when I see him is such a good like a day like he is so good as a boy. That's so sweet and I saw a video of the, the two of you you were standing back to back trying to lift each other up so you can see you have a lot of fun together. Yes yes that was a video that we did like not on purpose we actually play we're like brothers and sisters so it's it's always so fun playing. Like I have so many memories when we were doing scenes that when we had to work, we were really concentrated. Like he always helped me when I had to play certain scenes. Like he was playing really good, the, um, the, the clown. So it was easy for me to play Ariana. But then when we, like when the camera was off, we really had good, good times together. Now, Ariana does say she needs some time to think about their relationship status. So why do you think she still has doubts over making them an official couple? Personally, I say that Ariana has few doubts, a uh, few real doubts on the relationship. It's just that she feels that he is still the clown guy in the school. So I believe that making it official she still thinks that is going to be not something positive for her public feature we have to remember that ariana bases most of her character on what other people see and think about her so that would be like a down uh, like a downgrade for her officializing that she is uh, um, together with uh, julio so i think that that is the only thing that stops her what do you hope to see from Ariana and her story if renewed for a season two? I hope to see the best version of Ariana in the second in the second series. I hope that she is going to find new friends, that she is going to change herself, uh, just be herself without thinking about what people think about her. And also, I hope that she will understand that Julio is the boy that she actually needs for her life because we all need someone during our period of life that could be a friend or a boyfriend but I hope that she will understand that being good and being happy about your life is the most important thing rather people are thinking that it's not the coolest guy she just has, has to think about herself and about her well-being mental and physical and I think that Julio is going to be the perfect guy for him but I know it but now Ariana needs to know it so she has to in a certain way understand it yeah you're thinking the character needs to meet what I already know she needs to understand yeah yeah, yeah. and it happens so many times like at this age that you kind of like that chase you like that guy that you hear like you like the one that doesn't chase you but you actually need in your life the one that chases you the one that wants you not the one that rejects you but it sometimes happens it happened also to me so it's normal 
And I love that you're you're like a couple, two to three years older than your character, but you already like are a bit more mature and have some more life experience. Uh, I personally would love to see her in a session with her therapist because I know she still has some things to work out and maybe that that those sessions could continue to help her. But do you have any other wish list items for any other characters? What might you like to see from their stories? I would like to see um, like all the couples that are on um, the first series like to have a great ending. And I would like for Daniele to find his half part, to find like his actual soulmate, for Pietro to solve all his problems with his family and for uh, also for Lydia. She also has a great problem with her mother and people with people who surround her. And I hope she will find uh, a kind of street that will lead her to to think about herself and not about what other people say. And also for um, for Monica and for Isabel to find an equilibrium because Isabel is a girl who needs her spaces while instead Monica is a kind of dependent from that friendship and I want that they like maintain their kind of status of being best friends but giving each other spaces and also freedom but still talking to each other as they did in the past. I think you're trying to like solve all these problems but I like watching it play out as well because we kind of you know go through some rough patches but then hopefully find that happy ending and that hope. You did have a couple of kisses in the show so I was curious if you had an intimacy coordinator on set to make sure that the actors felt safe and comfortable during these scenes. Uh, I had an acting coach which prepared me on what would have happened. I didn't have an intimacy coordinator, but I know that other characters had. Maybe because what they were going to do was a little bit more delicate for them, but I didn't. Like for me, there was that kind of uh, feeling that I was a little bit stressed or it seemed something so strange. But then I just took it easy. I just didn't stress out and did the scenes even though I knew that it was something that wouldn't have happened like every day, but it's work. So that is what I would have had to do. I do think it's just important that everyone has the support that they need. So as long as you felt safe and then had the support when you needed it and the same with the other cast members. Uh, now take me behind the scenes. I'm curious about some of your favorite moments from set when the cameras were not rolling. Many of you have like, seen pictures of us on different social media platforms but I can assure you that the best moments that we lived were when we didn't have our phones like all cameras were off cameras of the set and cameras of phones and other like um, devices and I remember that breaks were really important for our days because uh, we just thought about having fun all together we ate a we ate together we chatted a little bit but then we had fun like in uh, the changing rooms and even outside every time we had a certain kind of space we usually played with bottles it seems something really stupid but we used like plastic bottles as balls because we didn't have something like to play volleyball or we love listening music all together we love singing together dancing and just doing things that are really good that's so nice to hear that the best moments are when your cameras are off because I know we do see a lot on social media. You're in each other's TikToks, but you also do spend time away from the camera. I'm sure getting to know one another. Did you know any of the other student actors prior to filming? Actually not. I didn't know any of the guys before we started filming. We just met at a meeting room and we sat at a large table and we just started talking about the series and what we were going to experience and read through the scripts together with Alessandro Celli. And I had such an incredible feeling because I believed or I thought that I already knew them 
like I felt a sort of chemistry of a special friendship already, but I didn't know them. It was such a strange feeling, but after a few days, uh, it was as if we knew each other from years. And so we didn't have any problems. Never, never. I just saw once Viaggio during a lesson at the school, Jenny Tamburi, and it was really fun because during that lesson, we actually played a really fun scene where I was jumping and he was singing on a chair. So in the moment in which I saw him, I said, like, I kind of know you. I know your name and I've seen you. But when we knew each other, it was so strange that day. But then we just talked all together and we spent some days together and then we started filming. And like you mentioned before, the cast has become like family. Do you still see each other very often? Yes, the relationship that uh, has been created between each other is as if we are a real family. And strangely enough, I see them more often now compared to the time in which we were filming the series. As we finished, I started freeing up my mind and freeing up all my days because I always studied during even during uh, the period in which we were filming, although I was on set and I was always busy. And so as I uh, started to think that I had and needed to dedicate more time to them. So from that moment on, I saw them like every day. And it's so strange because I was really, really upset when we finished filming the series because I thought now I will lose all of them. But it has been the complete opposite. And I am really grateful for what has happened in the last few months because without my personal change, like I changed as, as Ariana did during the series. I changed because um, and I think this has been one of the best decisions that I have ever taken. And I'm sure you have a group chat when you're not seeing each other. But as you mentioned, if you see each other every day, who needs that group chat when you can just hang out in person? It's not actually every day, but it feels like it's, uh, such a strong connection that there is between each other between all of us that I never feel as if they are distant from me even though we're not together physically and I think that that is a real real good part for us because we also have to work it all together so but I, I, I repeat I've changed a lot during these times and I'm really really grateful I'm proud of what I've done for them and what they are doing for me the fan support has been very positive. There are a lot of fan accounts dedicated to the show and the cast. What have been some messages or things that you've seen on social media and what has that meant to you? So all these edits and messages and followers are for me something new. It's like, wow, it has never happened to me. But it's such a good emotion and feeling because I read many messages but they're never superficial there is always people that are dedicating good words for me and some of their time sometimes even for writing really long texts and what i've read really often is that our characters in our series have been something that has saved people that have saved them during a complicated period of their life that they found a kind of shelter with our series. And that's something really, really emotional. Like the first times I read through these messages, I actually started crying because it's really difficult accepting the fact that you are doing something so important, although you're not recognizing what you're doing. Like my work was just filming and acting the series, but now I'm not doing anything. Now I'm just like, living and these people are saying that my smile my eyes and my pictures that I post on social medias are something that is saving them from being lonely or from being sad 
it's such a nice relationship to have that with you know fans and people who support the show but i think you know the bottom line is how impactful it has been for a lot of people and i'm glad that the cast and you know cast members like yourself are providing some light for people around the world now outside of acting you have a passion for sports you do dance gymnastics play tennis what do you enjoy about these activities What I enjoy about these activities is um, that I feel good every time I do them. Like movement for me is really important. It makes me feel free. And sometimes it's also, it also empties my mind. I'm always busy working and studying. And when I dance or when I play tennis, I feel free. Like it's a moment in which I dedicate just my thoughts to what I'm doing. And I think it also makes me feel good physically. Like after playing one hour of tennis with my friends or even alone with the teacher, I feel really, really good. Who is your favorite tennis player? So my favorite tennis player is Matteo Berrettini. <laughs> that is an Italian player that he now is doing great success. It must be fun to kind of watch tennis and then, and then play it as well, because you, I was reading that you can kind of, you can play competitively. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. I do, but not at their level. But it's, yes, it is strange. I've ne I never thought about it. But it's, it is strange because when you're like looking at tennis matches and you're watching them on TV or even like in presence, it is strange because you know the moves that they're doing. So, yeah, I never thought about that point. Did you ever think about going the competitive route and like professional or did you know that, you know, when you discovered acting that that was something that you wanted to focus on instead? I never actually thought about going on a professional level on sports because uh, other than sports, I always studied. I dedicated my days to studying. So I thought about acting. I did. but I'm not a competitive kind of girl. So I always prefer like just playing, reaching a quite good level, but never trying to reach professional ones. And I think that that's important for you because you mentioned you do sports to kind of clear your, your mind. So it's good to kind of keep that as a hobby rather than making it something where, you know, oh, I, I have to do well and you have to stay competitive. So um, let's talk about music briefly. Who are some songs or artists you're listening to on your playlist? So I listen quite a lot to um, international music rather than Italian because sometimes I feel better with their beat and how I can sing like and how I could dance those um, those songs. And I listen often like to Lizzo that screams a lot of girl power, her like songs, I love them. And they're even really um, singable then there is Justin Bieber that always plays good songs and hits then Bruno Mars has always been one of my favorite singers and I always listen to him although now he um, is like producing less songs but then there are even like One Republic and uh, Imagine Dragons uh, and also Coldplay that are bands that actually have played songs that are really important from for like my history and then also Adele that has played lots of uh, good music uh, and also deep deep um, text I always like looking at the words of a song maybe I can reflect my life in them and so I think she has good quiet music That's a good playlist there. Like you mentioned, you also focus on the lyrics, which is almost equally as important as, important as the sound. I have one more question for you, our signature question. If you could be any ice cream flavor, which would you be and why? I would choose salted caramel ice cream. First of all, because it's one of my favorite flavors of ice cream. But second, because I love the, controver the controversial combination. And that controversial combination also, also is what I actually am. Sometimes I am that kind of salty thing that you can taste when you scoop your ice cream. Like 
I'm a little bit cold, I can be bitter with people or I just can stay quiet because I love being silent sometimes. But on the other side, I'm my character is as sugar that makes up caramel. I'm really sweet. I always try to be kind with everyone. I like hugs. I like staying with lots of people and I'm always ready to help someone if it needs. But if that help is not given back, I am like salt that you can taste uh, in the depth of uh, the ice cream flavor. That's such a perfect way to end things off. And I love the thought that went into it. So thank you for that. Thank you. Like it actually is my favorite taste. And it's, it's a great when you also like that flavor and then you can kind of relate it to yourself. Um, but I had so much fun chatting with you. So thank you so much, Francesca, for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you. I had a real fun. Like it is a good first international experience because it is my first international experience. Yeah. And we're so honored um, to everyone who is watching this interview make sure to watch diaries it is out now on netflix watch it and tell your friends so they get a season two and thank you for watching we have more interviews coming soon and we'll see you next time